Ruby. Okay, so here's the question. There are bad dogs and there are dogs that do bad things. What are your thoughts about that? <laughs> well, to some degree there are both, for sure. Um, but one of the things that I get very frustrated by is people talking about dogs as being bad dogs. Um, especially because very commonly the dogs are doing behavior that is very normal dog behavior within the whole spectrum of dogs. Not that every dog does that, but the behavior they're doing is a normal dog behavior. Um, doesn't mean it's good behavior and doesn't mean that it works for us. But um, first I, I would like to dispel a couple myths. So a really ironic thing is that there's one group of dog trainers who tends to say either of the following two things. There are no bad dogs, only bad owners. And of course we particularly hear that as it relates to like pit bulls that maybe maul somebody or something else. Um, and uh, that's it, that's, that's false. Um, there are dogs that have problems, that have very significant problems. I wouldn't necessarily call them bad dogs, although, you know, uh, maybe you could say that about some of them. Not every dog is appropriate for every situation, and some maybe aren't appropriate for civilized life. Um, but hopefully we can che change them differently, treat them differently. But the idea that if every dog was just raised by a nice person, they would all be good is crazy. There are a lot of dogs that have challenges and all. Um, so it's crazy to say there are no bad dogs, only bad owners. There are dogs that have some real difficulties. Um, second thing we hear from the same group of people is uh, all dogs are born perfect. That is about the dumbest statement I can possibly imagine somebody who works with dogs. You for mean the clean there. slate kind of thing? Every dog well, is Well, yeah, they're a clean, clean slate, slate and they're fine. No, they're not a clean slate. They have their genetics and, and their genetics very often causes significant problems. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I would say the vast majority of the dogs that I work with, um, a huge part of their problem comes just from their breeding. And that's not to say they were poorly bred or this, that, or that. Their genetics, their natural personality causes some challenges for them. Um, and I don't consider those to be bad dogs. They're on the spectrum of what dogs are, you know. And, um, but they need to learn to be different. Um, but there is a huge difference between the idea of a bad dog and a dog behaving badly. And um, for sure, some dogs are born to be problem dogs. And I don't mean that somebody intentionally bred them to be problem dogs, although, you know. Happens. My, one of my favorite breeds, who are my favorite breeds? Jack Russell's and Malinois, right? And, and third, Rottweilers. I mean, really good Rottweilers, really good Malinois, really good Jack Russell's are horrible pets for most people. Um, they can be trained to be really good pets, but, uh, but not usually by traditional means. Um, but, so there's a big difference between how the dog's behaving and whether it's a good dog or a bad dog. So just an example, one of the most common areas in which people would tend to really label a dog a bad dog is dogs that do resource guarding. Mm -hmm. right? We think that's like just an inherently evil thing. Um, you know, this is violence against your own family and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Welcome to the dog world. You know, take a pack of dogs and throw a bunch of food in the middle of them and see if there's not a fight sometimes. Now, some some groups there is, some there isn't. Well, lay um, some M and M's down at your house with your kids and see if there's not a fight there. <laughs> right, right. You know, or toys. You know, right, whatever. Yeah. Right. We see it all the time. But um, so there's a, there's actually a video of uh, a dog sanctuary. I. I I think it's in Thailand and there's got to be a couple hundred dogs and these monks or whatever, come, they, they feed all these dogs all at one time and there's no fighting. But they feed them a ton of food and it's, and it's really spread out and whatnot and, um, and all these dogs seem to be very similar genetically so maybe this is just sort of their temperament but um, I, I, you know I've consulted with uh, rescues that, that have open areas with lots of dogs and uh, they've had a number of dogs get killed every year over resource guarding and stuff and um, you know the dogs that do it I don't think of as bad dogs the behavior is horrible 
but they're just doing what's natural to them based on their genetics and how they've been raised and whatnot. And in most cases, we could pretty easily train them to be different um, if we wanted to put a little bit of time and effort into it and if we had the right ideas. And if all of a sudden they're not doing that behavior anymore, how is it that they were ever a bad dog? Mm -hmm. They were a dog that behaved badly. So I do think we have to recognize that um, dogs are predisposed to some kind of behavior. Um, some dogs are really predisposed to very calm behavior, some to very anxious behavior, some to very assertive or aggressive behavior, you know, whatever it might be. I mean, you get hunting dogs because they hunt, they want to go kill things, mm -hmm. right? And if the thing they want to kill is your cat, <laughs> you know, that seems like a bad dog. But how is it a bad dog? It's just doing dog behavior. And if we can train the dog to feel comfortable about the cat and see it as a companion and whatnot, and not do that anymore, then it's not a bad dog. So how was it ever a bad dog? It was a dog that was badly behaved, um, but also a dog that was behaving the way it was, largely because that's what its genes programmed it to do. Um, we get a lot of dogs that, as puppies, are just really hectic, really intense, really bitey and stuff, and particularly difficult to have in a home with young kids and stuff. Um, and some people will label these bad dogs. No, they're uneducated dogs. I mean, this is just by nature who they are. There's nothing wrong with them being that way. It's not a good fit, absent good training mm -hmm. for a home with young kids. Um, but doesn't mean the dog can't be trained to be differently. And again, if it can be trained to be different, and now it's not doing all that stuff, and it's a fun dog and everything else, how was it ever a bad dog? Mm -hmm. It was a dog that was behaving badly. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. Um, but likewise, you know, there are dogs that have really significant problems that really come from their nature. You think of some of the hardcore separation anxiety cases, mm -hmm. um, or dogs that really, really are uncomfortable with people they don't know, maybe only comfortable with two people, some not comfortable not with the people they've been raised with their yeah. whole life. Um, you know, we should recognize in looking at those dogs that those dogs are not trying to give us a hard time. Mm -hmm. The dog is having a hard time and the dog needs help. And if we look at it as a bad dog, then first of all, one of the things we often come up with is help would be medicating it. And there are times when medications help dogs. It's not that common and it's not all that black and white in general. But, uh, but that's still looking at the dog as being mentally ill. Oftentimes we're doing something that's just a normal part of the spectrum of dog behavior. Um, but if the dog is having a hard time and we recognize that, then we would tend to look at the dog with compassion and try to think, how do we help the dog around this? If we think the dog is giving us a hard time, then we tend to think of the dog as bad and we tend to think much more into the realm of we have to control and scold and punish the dog and everything. And we might need to do a little bit of that, uh, depending on what goes on to help the dog. But when we look at it as having a problem, then we can just come at it with such a different perspective. and. You know, when you, when you bring a loving and caring perspective to the work, and you bring solutions that are compatible with that, it's amazing how often these animals end up being loving and compassionate animals. I mean, almost always. I mean, I, I can't even think in the last, you know, five years of a dog that we haven't had make that kind of change. Mm -hmm. And you know, one one that comes to mind is that dog Harley that we had. Mm -hmm. Was she a big Aussie mix? Mm -hmm. And the only time she was really peaceful with her family was at like six in the morning after she had slept. The guy would come in to her pen because he couldn't put her in a crate because she was too freaked out about being in a crate, but she'd be in a pen. And uh, he would sit there and just rub her for half an hour or so. That was the only peaceful time they had. As the day went on, her stress built up and up, mm -hmm. and she had more and more problems with it. And she ended up being sweet as hell. She was. And so she was super um, human aggressive when we got her. Mm -hmm. um, she really only liked her dad. She scared the mother and the child in the oh, home. Oh, and the other thing that was really weird about her <laughs> at the daycare that she went to, mm -hmm. which she ended up going to Almost every for two, day. Well, for two weeks yeah. at a time yeah. when the dad was traveling because mm -hmm. the family, the rest of the family couldn't deal with her. 
everyone that she had met in the dog area, yeah. she was comfortable with. Right. Everyone at the exact same facility, including people who worked in the dog area, if she met them somewhere else first, it would not. Go she was well. not yeah. comfortable with them. And they would clear out the lobby anytime she came in and out. So she was. <laughs> oh, people or dogs. Yeah, and she went after people and dogs. Yeah, 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 that was really funny. Um, so they were very, very careful with her. And so when we got her, well, actually, you said to me, "You won't be touching this dog for like a week or something." And <laughs> right. she would literally like growl at me. You'd walk her by to take her outside, mm -hmm. and she would growl at me on her way by and, yeah. um, and lunge. Just to let you know. Yeah. <laughs> I am serious. Uh, and lunge at me. At the beginning it was lunge and then after that she sort of took it down yeah. to growling. Yeah. Um, but it, it really didn't take long before she um, just loved affection. Yeah. Loved attention. And it didn't And was long. very stable through the day. Was Absolutely. We didn't see yeah. these variables during the day but yeah. um, but you were doing lots of stuff, lots of relaxation stuff with yeah. her. But, um, and she was on a boatload of, Zen, of uh, Prozac in yeah. the beginning. Yeah. You, you and we, we ended up weaning her off of that. Yeah. Um, and she, um, she started to do really well. I mean, we travel a lot and we had some people coming in, multiple people coming in and helping us um, take care of the dogs when we were on the road. And she did quite well with all of them. Well, it, you know, it's funny because I remember making a point initially of introducing her to the person that was coming to take care of the dogs and then something happened and that person couldn't come and Brandon my son had to come over and he's not a person that a dog who's not comfortable with strangers would typically like you know big big guy deep voice big beard and hair and all that often wears a hat and, yeah 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 <laughs> you know six foot one and whatnot and he came in and I was just blown away that she was good with him I told him if you know if she's not nice with you just leave her in the kennel it, you know the crate if she ends up having an accident in there oh well better to have somebody else clean it up than that she gets herself in trouble and mm -hmm. and whatnot and and you know and that brings up a really good point um, so many times dogs end up getting labeled as bad dogs because people repeatedly put the dogs in situations that they know the dog is not going to do well in. Mm -hmm. And they're usually doing it because all the dog trainers of the world and all the dog training books have told them your dog needs to be socialized more. Yeah, and that or don't let your dog get away with... Yeah, don't let it get away with it. You know, you yeah. gotta, you got to do this. Yeah. Um, but Harley was, was such a good example. I mean, she was... Uh, she, I mean, she was about as difficult a dog as you're going to find in one way or another. And um, do you remember what the people kept telling us to tell us how, how difficult she was that freaked her out? Oh yeah, so one of the things they said, which was the strangest comment, and we were perplexed for a very long time, apparently when they were in the kitchen cooking or anything, they said when paper towels drop on the ground... Yeah, if you drop the roll of paper towels... She goes nuts. Yeah, and we were and aggresses like, on them. And aggresses yeah. on, on you for dropping the paper towels. And we yeah. were like, well, first off, who drops that many paper right. towels? How does, it, how, does this, <laughs> how does this happen enough that you could even say it's a pattern, right? That was that was kind of funny. But it did actually speak to, you know, her her level of anxiety. Well, and how unwell any, she was. Right, you know? yeah. right, with yeah. everything. And something as simple as a paper yeah. towel dropping was yeah. enough to set her off. Well, and again, that was one of the things they said, you know, if it happens while you're cooking breakfast, it's going to be a small blow up. If it happens while you're cooking dinner, dinner, yeah, it's going to be a bigger deal. And that actually, um, by eight or nine o'clock, they had to put the dog away because mm -hmm. she would she would start to become more dangerous throughout the day. And so to me, I interpreted that just as her stress hormones building up and building up throughout the day and they're never being reabsorbed and never, never mm -hmm. bleeding back off. Mm -hmm. um, but it was so cool when we would see her actually happy to be in the front yard and a stranger would show up mm -hmm. and she'd go greet him at the gate wagging her tail like, hey look, here's well, a new person. Well, whatever tail she know? had, it was yeah, really well, that little, that little <laughs> but, yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was just, it was really nice and what a transformation for her that she didn't have to walk the planet mm -hmm. yeah. feeling that yeah. same way forever. Uh, yeah, and so I, I guess the reason I bring her up is you know, I, I think for sure, if you described how she was behaving, what she was doing, etc., etc., she is the definition. She's the of definition a bad of a dog. bad dog, right? You know, how would you not think that? You know, and certainly at minimum, you have to think she's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, if people can have mental illnesses, of course, dogs can and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, but man, she just ended up so different and so nice. 
And, you know, of course, well, just as an aside, one of the things I love about the process that we use is that um, we didn't have to be telling her what to do all the time and mm -hmm. everything. I mean, she, she got to a point where she just was good, you know? Yeah, well, it, it certainly wasn't about sit down or place or anything no. like that. But, um, oh, I had a thought, but I forgot it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all right. I'll buy you another one. <laughs> uh, um, but, you know, but just the fact that she could be so well on her own. Yeah. And that strangers could come into the house to take care of the dogs. Well, and, and it wasn't about us controlling a particular situation uh, that we had to be there in order for her to be good or we had to tell her what to do in order to be good. You know, exactly yeah. as you said, she, yeah. she yeah. felt it good within herself. And she helped me learn one of the most amazing things. So over the years, you know, of course I've worked with, you know, a lot of canine dogs. That's kind of my background. And so you have all these high energy, you know, real ramped up dogs. And I, I was really good at figuring out how to control dogs and teach them that they couldn't come out of a kennel or a crate until they were told to. And to get them to do that without telling them what to do and then be great about it. But I could never figure out a consistent way, even a really good inconsistent way, to get high energy dogs of any kind once they had waited to come out calmly. They would they would come out like a bull mm -hmm. in a china shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, she helped me learn how to do it. So maybe on another video I'll tell you how that how I did that. But well, that was cool. But it was yeah, so I owe her a lot for that. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, that is so cool. So, anyway. Anyway. Well that's it. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye.